Good morning. Welcome to IS Help Desk. This is a new video in the series of Revise for PT 2020 with IS Help Desk. This is a third video in the series of Ecology and Environment and in this video we will cover topics such as wetlands, mangroves and coral reefs. Under this we will define what are wetlands, mangroves and coral reefs, what are their significance, what are the threats they are facing and what are the conservation measures have been taken by the government. So before starting of the video, we should go through the previous year questions based on the above topics. So in this, the question is related to Ramsar Convention. Then the basic about the coral reefs have been asked. Then they have asked what are Montrex record and what are wetland international. And then they have asked about the location of coral reefs in India. So if we go through the previous year questions, then we can infer that the questions are mainly related to the basic concepts of coral reefs, wetlands and mangroves and what are the conservation measures have been taken by the government or in the international perspective. So now moving to the first topic, wetlands. So the first is what is the definition of wetlands? Ramsar Convention, this we will we'll read later in the video. Ramsar Convention defines wetlands as areas of marsh, peatland or water, whether natural or artificial, permanent or temporary, with water static or flowing, with fresh water or salt water, including areas of marine water, the depth of which at low tides does not exceed 6 meters. So the definition of wetlands are very vast. So agar hum wetland ki basic definition ko samajhne ki koshish karein, jo hum aas paas ki cheejo mein dekhte hain, to it is mainly a marshy area, jahaan pe water permanently रहता है चाहे वो स्टैग्नेंट हो चाहे फ्लोइंग हो चाहे नेचुरल हो चाहे आर्टिफिशियल हो लेकिन वहां पे पानी पूरे समय रहेगा और इट इज अ मार्शी एरिया सो नाउ मूविंग टू व्हाट आर द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ वेटलैंड्स वेटलैंड्स आर वन ऑफ द मोस्ट प्रोडक्टिव बायोम्स एंड इट हैज सोशियो इकोनॉमिक एंड इकोलॉजिकल इंपॉर्टेंस सो द फर्स्ट इज इट इट प्रोवाइड्स हैबिटेट फॉर एक्वेटिक फ्लोरा एंड फोना एज वेल एज ऑफ माइग्रेटरी बर्ड्स सेकंड इज इट प्रोवाइड्स फ्रेश वाटर सप्लाई as it carry out water purification, filtration of sediments and nutrients from surface water. It provides tourism also, food and building material, flood mitigation, helps in nutrient recycling and groundwater recharging, buffer shorelines against erosion and pollutants, act as genetic reservoir for various species of plant, especially rice, and it helps in climate change mitigation. So, importance of wetlands are that they provide habitat, Fresh water supply, tourism, helps in groundwater recharging, buffer shorelines against erosion and pollutants and helps in climate change and flood mitigation. But now due to development, due to economic activities and due to reclamation of land, wetland ecosystem is under threat. So the threats have been divided in biotic threat and abiotic. Biotic threat includes un uncontrolled siltation discharge of wastewater, industrial effluents. So if the pollution level is increasing in the wetland, then it will not be able to filter as per its capacity. So the wetland water will become more pollutant and it will not be able to support the habitat for different aquatic flora and fauna. Then deforestation and soil erosion is also affecting the wetland ecosystem and due to growth of tourist sector or for the formation of roads that is leading to habitat destruction. An abiotic threat includes weed infestation and encroachment which is leading to shrinkage of area of wetlands. Then the man-made pressures are increasing which are leading to habitat destruction and loss of biodiversity then uncontrolled dredging resulting in successional changes and hydrological intervention resulting in loss of aquifers. So it is not able to filter the water as well as not able to support in flood mitigation. So due to these threats, the wetland ecosystem is decreasing and at the international level, a Ramsar convention have been signed which is mainly for the conservation of wetlands. So it is an intergovernmental treaty with more than 150 members that deals with conservation aspects of inland waters and near shore coastal waters. 
mainly it is a voluntary system and does not impose restriction on nations and landowners so this is the important thing which can be asked in the examination and it is named after the city of ramsar in iran where the convention has been signed in 1971 and came into force in 1975 india has joined the convention in 1982 and under the convention when a nation joins a ramsar convention so usko ek wetland site ko wetland of international importance announce karna padta hai aur ramsar site so in 1981 chilka lake in odisha was designated as first indian wetland of international importance under ramsar convention but now the question arises what are the advantages of joining the ramsar convention so if a nation declares any wetland as of international importance then it elevates the importance of the site at the international level encourages international cooperation for its conservation brings access to expert advice and latest information and provides an opportunity for learning the best global practices for wise use of wetlands and it gets the opportunity for international guidelines and represent a contribution to global environmental protection and maintenance of global biodiversity so these are the advantages of joining ramsar convention now the important thing is ramsar convention works closely with six other organizations which are known as international organization partners so in the examination the or name of the organization can be asked so the first is bird life international as the name suggests obviously it will conserve birds their habitats and global biodiversity the second is iucn we all know that iucn is a organization working for the conservation and sustainable use of natural resources and iucn declare the red list which defines the status of the animals whether they are of endangered vulnerable or critically endangered the third organization is international water management institute it is a non profit research organization which focuses on improving how water and land resources should be managed with the aim of underpinning food security and reducing poverty next is wetlands international wetlands international is a global organization that works to sustain and restore wetlands and their resources it is an independent not for profit global organization so if we see the previous year question there has been question asked on wetland international so the first statement is it is an intergovernment organization formed by the countries which are signatories to ramsar convention this statement is wrong as we have read that wetland international is a not for profit organization and second it works at the field level to develop and mobilize knowledge and use the practical experience to advocate for better policies so this is the right statement so the answer will be b then the other organization is world wildlife fund it is an international non governmental organization for the preservation of the wildlife and the last one is international wild fowl and wetlands trust these are the six organization which work in cooperation with the ramsar convention and the question can be asked on such organizations now moving to the next part other partners who work for the conservation of wetlands are convention of biological diversity convention to combat desertification convention on the conservation of migratory species world heritage convention convention on international trade in endangered species so in the pdf provided you can read the objectives of all these conventions and it can be directly asked in the examination now moving to the next topic what is montrex record montrex record is a register of wetland sites on ramsar list which are facing immediate challenge so montrex record रामसार साइट्स का ही एक लिस्ट बनाई जाती है जो सबसे ज्यादा थ्रेट में है एंड दे आर फेसिंग इमीडिएट चैलेंज और उनका कंजर्वेशन सबसे ज्यादा जरूरी है सो इट आइडेंटिफाई प्रायोरिटी साइट्स फॉर पॉजिटिव नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल कंजर्वेशन अटेंशन सो इन इंडिया देर आर टू मॉन्ट्रिक्स रिकॉर्ड साइट फर्स्ट इज लोकटक लेक इन मणिपुर एंड इट इज अंडर थ्रेट ड्यू टू डिफॉरेस्टेशन इन कैचमेंट एरिया एंड पॉल्यूशन and second is kevlada national park in rajasthan and it is due to water shortage invasive growth of grass and 
reducing its suitability for certain water bird species. Invasive growth of grass means क्या होता है जो grass वहाँ की native species नहीं है और वो वहाँ के grow कर रही है तो जो वो native species को वो sideline कर देती है और वहाँ के resources को खुद consume करने लगती है जिसकी वजह से पूरा ecosystem change हो जाता है so these are the two montrex record sites in india so if we see the previous year question there has been question on montrex record also so it is if a wetland of international importance is brought under montrex record what does it imply changes in ecological character have occurred or occurring or likely to occur in the wetland as a result of human interfere the country in which wetland is located should enact a law to prohibit any act human activity the survival of the wetland depend on cultural practices and tradition and it is given the status of world heritage site so as we have read that montrex record include the list of ramsar sites which need immediate attention so the answer will be a now in india the wetland conservation and management rules 2016 have been launched as well as 2017 so the highlights of the wetland conservation and management rule 2017 is the management of wetlands have been decentralized that is the power has been given to state government so that protection and conservation of work can be done at local level and one size fits all does not work in the conservation of wetlands so the decentralization have been done but the monitoring will be done by central government and the states and uts will set up state and ut wetland authorities which will be headed by environment minister and include other officials and other expert members also so what will be the function of these committees this will identify and notify the wetland for protection develop the comprehensive list of activities which have to be regulated or permitted kyunki agar hame particular area ka conservation karna hota hai to wahan pe hame activities ko control karna padta hai aur human interference ko control karna padta hai tabhi hum us area ka conservation kar sakte hain so jaise biosphere reserves mein hota hai ki teen parts mein usko divide kara gaya hai so jaise core buffer aur आउटर एरिया सो कोर एरिया में कोई भी एक्टिविटीज अलाउ नहीं होती है ताकि उसका कंजर्वेशन सिमिलरली इन कमिटीज को भी कुछ एक्टिविटीज को प्रोहिबिट करना पड़ेगा फॉर द कंजर्वेशन ऑफ वेटलैंड एंड विल ऑल्सो नीड टू प्रिपेयर अ लिस्ट ऑफ ऑल वेटलैंड ऑफ द स्टेट एंड देर विल बी ए नेशनल वेटलैंड कमिटी विच विल बी हेडेड बाई मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ इन्वायरमेंट सेक्रेटरी टू मॉनिटर द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ दीज रूल्स एज आई हैव टोल्ड द power of conservation have been decentralized to state government the monit but the monitoring power will remain with the central government so national wetland committee have been formed from this so in this the setting up of any industry manufacturing plant waste dumping discharge of untreated waste have been prohibited so you can read the rules in detail from the pdf provided and this is a picture which have been provided which includes the prohibited activities within wetlands and india's prominent wetlands and their states in which they are present so reading of this list is important as this can be asked directly in the exam now moving to the next topic mangroves mangroves are the plants which are located between the land and sea and they are the example of ecotone As in the first video I have explained that ecotone is a transition area between two biomes. So in this first is the land biome that is the forest biome and the second is the marine biome. So mangroves lies in between the land and sea and they act as a transition zone and mangroves are salt tolerant plants called halophytes which are adapted to harsh coastal condition of tropical and subtropical intertidal regions of the world receiving rainfall between 1000 to 3000 mm and temperature ranging between 25 to 35 degree centigrade so one third of the world's mangrove are found in asia followed by africa and then north and central america so now moving to the significance of mangroves 
मैंग्रोव एक्ट एज ए बफर जोन बिटवीन द लैंड एंड सी सो एज दे आर प्रेजेंट इन द ट्रांजिशन जोन बिटवीन लैंड एंड सी सो इट कंट्रोल्स द स्पीड ऑफ द सी वेव और इसीलिए बोला जाता है कि अगर हाई टाइट्स आ रही हैं या साइक्लोन आ रहा है तो मैंग्रोव जो है वो प्रोटेक्ट करते हैं कोस्टल एरियाज को क्योंकि दे एक्ट एज ए बफर जोन और मैंग्रोव अगर रिड्यूज हो रहे हैं तो कोस्टल एरियाज पे साइक्लोन का इम्पैक्ट ज्यादा होता है इट ऑल्सो प्रोटेक्ट द लैंड फ्रॉम इरोजन इट एक्ट एज ए शील्ड अगेंस्ट साइक्लोन्स एज आई हैव टोल्ड अर्लियर एंड इट प्रोवाइड्स ब्रीडिंग ग्राउंड फॉर वेराइटी ऑफ मेराइन एनिमल्स इट प्रोवाइड्स लाइफ फॉर फिश एम्फीबियंस रेप्टाइल्स बर्ड्स एंड इवन मैमल्स लाइक टाइगर्स एज इन सुंदरबन मैंग्रोव रिजर्व टाइगर्स आर प्रेजेंट दे आर गुड सोर्स ऑफ टिम्बर फ्यूल एंड फॉर्डर दे आर सोर्स फॉर इनकम जनरेशन सेव द मेराइन डाइवर्सिटी प्यूरिफाई द वॉटर बाई एब्जॉर्विंग इम्प्योरिटीज एंड हार्मफुल हैवी मेटल्स एंड दे आर एक्ट एज ए सोर्स फॉर रिक्रिएशन एंड टूरिज्म ऑल्सो सो दीज आर द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ मैंग्रोव फॉरेस्ट ना मूविंग टू द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ मैंग्रोव इन इंडिया फर्स्ट इज सुंदरबन इट इज द सिंगल लार्जेस्ट ब्लॉक ऑफ टाइडल हेलोफाइटिक मैंग्रोव ऑफ द वर्ल्ड विच इज फेमस फॉर द प्रेजेंस ऑफ रॉयल बेंगाल टाइगर एंड क्रोकोडाइल्स बट द थ्रेट फेस्ड बाई दीज एरियाज आर दैट दीज आर बीन क्लियरिंग फॉर एग्रीकल्चर यूज सेकेंड इज भितरकनिका इन उड़ीसा एंड इट इज द सेकेंड लार्जेस्ट इन द इंडियन सब कॉन्टिनेंट देन द नेक्स्ट एरिया इज गोदावरी कृष्णा डेल्टाइक रीजन इन आंध्र प्रदेश देन मैंग्रोव आर फाउंड इन महाराष्ट्र गोवा एंड कर्नाटका and very less are found in kerala and the next is in gulf of kush and kori creek in gujarat these are also found in andaman and nicobar islands so through this map you can see the areas which are famous for mangrove forest in india the location of these areas can be asked in the examination now the mangrove species are first is sundari trees Sundarban has been named after the Sundari trees only and these are classified as endangered in the IUCN red list then the other species are also present you don't have to learn all the species but the first important is sundari trees but due to natural and anthropogenic activities mangroves are under threat so some of the threats which are faced by mangroves include cyclones typhoons and strong wave action and especially due to the climate change the intensity of cyclone and wave action is increasing second is overgrazing by livestock then insect pests such as wood borers caterpillars and beetles in damage the wood as well as the plants but the threats due to human activities are decreasing the mangroves at high speed first is deforestation indiscriminate tree felling and loping indiscriminate conversion of mangroves on public lands for aquaculture and agriculture encroachment due to tourism lack of interest of private land owners illegal large scale collection of mangrove forest for medicines which hinders their natural regeneration then the pollution from the industries or the sewage waste are, are obstructing the flow of water so if you are reading threats related to mangroves coral reefs or wetlands or any natural resources then you have to divide it between the natural threats and the human act, and the threats due to human activities now moving to the initiatives for mangrove conservation So the first is mangroves for future. It is a collaboration between multiple partners, including government, NGO, and research institute. It is co-chaired by IUCN and UNDP. It is important, and it promotes investment in coastal ecosystem for sustainable development. And mangroves are the flagship of the initiative, but it also covers coral reefs, estuaries, lagoons, sandy beaches, sea grasses, and wetlands. So along with the conservation of mangroves they are also conserving these biomes also the member countries are india bangladesh cambodia indonesia maldives myanmar pakistan seychelles sri lanka thailand and vietnam and the second initiative is global mangrove alliance it brings together technical experts civil society organization governments businesses funding agencies and foundations for the 
कंजर्वेशन एंड रिस्टोरेशन ऑफ मैंग्रूव सो दीज टू इनिशियटिव आर ऑकरिंग इन विच इंडिया इज ए पार्टनर अलॉन्ग विद दिस मैंग्रूव आर प्रोटेक्टेड थ्रू ए रेंज ऑफ लेजिस्लेशन सच एज कोस्टल रेगुलेशन जोन नोटिफिकेशन इन्वायरमेंटल इम्पैक्ट असेसमेंट स्टडीज इंडियन फॉरेस्ट एक्ट नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी सेवन एंड फॉरेस्ट कंजर्वेशन एक्ट नाइनटीन एटी सो अंडर दीज लेजिस्लेशन मैंग्रूव आर कंजर्व इन India now moving to the last topic that is coral reefs so what are coral reefs corals are the form of invertebrate animals and the coral larva get attached to rocks which lead to the formation of coral reefs these are the underwater ecosystem which are formed due to the presence of symbiotic relationship between the coral reef and the zooxanthellae so now moving to the favorable conditions for the formation of coral reef first is these occur in tropical oceans warm tropical oceans with minimum temperature of 20 degree similarly as you have read that mangroves are also present in tropical and subtropical region similarly coral reefs can be found in warm tropical oceans only and the oceanic water should be free of sedimentation agar पानी में सेडिमेंट होंगे देन इट विल चोक द कोरल्स और कोरल ब्लीचिंग हो जाएगी देन देर शुड बी लो सेलिनिटी क्यों कोरल री फॉर्मेशन इज वेरी सेंसिटिव अगर थोड़ा सा भी टेम्परेचर और सेलिनिटी में डिफरेंस होगा देन इट लीड्स टू कोरल ब्लीचिंग जो हम आगे पढ़ेंगे कि कोरल ब्लीचिंग क्या होता है सो यू शुड नो द फेवरेबल कंडीशन फॉर द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ कोरल रीफ एज इट कैन बी आस्ड इन द एग्जामिनेशन डायरेक्टली नेक्स्ट इज दे आर प्राइमरीली लोकेटेड बिटवीन थर्टी डिग्री नॉर्थ एंड ट्वेंटी फाइव डिग्री साउथ वेयर वॉटर टेम्परेचर इज अब ट्वेंटी डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड एंड द कोरल्स आर डिवाइडेड इन थ्री पार्ट फर्स्ट इज फ्रिंजिंग रीफ देन सेकेंड इज बैरियर रीफ एंड थर्ड इज अटोल्स मीन्स फ्रिंजिंग रीफ्स होती हैं कि जब वो लैंड से अटैच होके कोरल्स बनती हैं तो उसे हम फ्रिंजिंग रीफ कहते हैं सेकेंड इज बैरियर रीफ इसमें कोरल आर फॉर्म नियर द लैंड लेकिन लैंड और कोरल्स के बीच में एक लगून होता है या वाटर बॉडी होती है सो दैट मीन तब उस कोरल रीफ्स को हम बैरियर रीफ्स कहते हैं एंड थर्ड इज अटोल कि अगर फ्रिंजिंग रीफ जो है वो वॉल्कैनिक आइलैंड या पर्टिकुलर कोई पर्टिकुलर आइलैंड के किनारे बनी हुई है और वो आइलैंड सब मर्ज हो गया है तो अटोल रहे सो द रीफ विल बी प्रेजेंट एंड इट विल सिंपली इन द सर्कुलर फॉर्म वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड द टाइप्स ऑफ कोरल रीफ थ्रू दिस एग्जाम्पल फ्रिंजिंग रीफ्स की इट इज अटैच टू द शोर लाइन सेकेंड इज द बैरियर रीफ कि कोरल रीफ और शोर के बीच में एक वाटर लगून आ गया है एंड थर्ड इज एटोल कि जहां पे ये जो एरिया था दिस कैन बी एन आइलैंड और द माउंटेन सो ये सबमर्ज हो गया है और इसके किनारे जो है वो रीफ फॉर्मेशन हो गया है सो दिस इज नोन एज एटोल ना मूविंग टू द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ कोरल रीफ्स इन इंडिया इट इज फाउंड इन गल्फ ऑफ कश देन इन द वेस्ट कोस्ट ऑफ इंडिया near the lakshadweep islands gulf of mannar park bay and andaman and nicobar group of islands you can see this through the map then what are the uses of coral reefs it removes and recycle co2 a greenhouse gas it protect the shore from erosion similarly with same as the wetlands and mangroves they are home to 4000 species and it provide medicines and coral skeletons are used in reconstructive bone surgery so these are the benefits of coral reefs but the coral reefs are facing threats mainly due to destructive fishing practices overfishing careless tourism pollution sedimentation coral mining and climate change as you have read that coral reefs grow only in favorable condition so the pollution sedimentation climate change are changing the temperature and the salinity of the region as well as the overfishing and destructive fishing practices are leading to destruction of and when due to these threats corals are destructed so this phenomena is known as coral bleaching as the color of the corals changes because they live in symbiotic relationship with zooxanthellae algae and due to the changes in the temperature salinity or the other threats the algae dies which cause the coral bleach to turn completely white 
and this is known as coral bleaching. So what are the causes for coral bleaching? Changes in ocean temperature due to climate change, pollution and sewage runoff, extreme low tides, xenobiotics. Xenobiotics means कि कोई इन्फेक्शन अगर हो जाए then there is coral disease then coral mining and unsustainable research pattern so these are the threats which are faced by coral reefs and that leading to coral bleaching for the conservation of coral reefs international coral reef initiative have been taken its aim is to raise global awareness on the plight of coral reefs around the world and promoting the best practices in coral reef management and ensuring that coral reefs are included in relevant international deliberation it is the only global entity solely devoted to coral reefs now the last topic is what are ecologically sensitive zones ecologically sensitive zones act as a buffer for protection of protected area such as national parks and wildlife sanctuaries means जब हम नेशनल पार्क और वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी के किनारे एक बफर एरिया करते हैं एंड देन उसके बाद जो है वो विलेज या ह्यूमन सेटलमेंट शुरू होता है तो उसको हम इकोलॉजिकली सेंसिटिव जोन्स कहते हैं एंड द एक्टिविटीज अराउंड दिस जोन्स आर प्रोटेक्टेड ताकि कंजर्वेशन ऑफ नेशनल पार्क एंड वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरीज हो सके सो इट द इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग इज इट इज नोटिफाइड अंडर सेक्शन थ्री ऑफ द इन्वायरमेंट प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट नाइनटीन and it classifies activities in three categories the prohibited activities will be commercial mining setting of industries causing pollution and establishment of major hydroelectric project so in the ecologically sensitive zones these activities are totally prohibited then second is regulated establishment of hotel and resorts electrical cables drastic change of agriculture system these are regulated and permitted are on agriculture and horticulture practices by local communities and organic farming but many states are opposed to ecological sensitive zones because of the presence of minerals and resources so in this video we have covered wetlands mangroves and coral reefs so i hope you have found the video useful for the prelims examination and the pdf of this material will be available on our website www.ishelpdesk.in and along with this pdf we have also uploaded the conservation steps taken by the government such as project tiger project rhino project elephant so because these are the factual information and we have not designed the video on this and along with this we will also provide a list of species and national parks in news from the last one year for the prelims examination thank you Hope you have liked the video. For any query, you can mail us at info at the rate is helpdesk dot in or WhatsApp at eight five eight six zero double five seven eight three. And for more guidance, please visit our website. Thank you.